It's Mike Golick. Thanks for joining us, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing well. How how tough is it to say virtual radio row? What a bummer, you know? I mean, what, <laughs> yeah. a, what a wild year this has been. It is it is kind of wild, but I don't know. Part of me is like, you know, Radio Row just had so many people all near you. And then if the guys next to you are like from, with all due respect to the Northeast, the Northeast, like they're going to be bleeding into your broadcast because they're all like yeah. that. They're going to be arguing. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't know about hey. that because I feel like you were up on a stage somewhere with, you know, 500 feet of room around you. We were sitting down there in the bullpen. It's tough down there. You know what? You're right. We were fortunate enough to kind of have our own state, so so we didn't really we didn't really run into that. But I I, I get your point. I guess I just missed uh, what it was, you know. And and hopefully when in LA next year we get back to more more normalcy. It is it, it is a really cool experience that I think if you do radio, it's something that you'll never forget. And it's cool because in our case, it's our local radio station, right? And so all your teammates are there, and you're hanging out, and it's a really cool deal. So. It's great that we've been able to get the guests, though, and you are one of those guys. Now, are, are you here to represent someone, or are you just a big fan of the home of the Cowboys? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I am uh, talking about something really cool. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. It's uh, you know everybody plays those those paper squares. You know where you pick the numbers and you're at the end of each quarter, whatever. Oh, the yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, that's the paper version, and just like everything else, we've moved to the modern version. And we, I, I, I'm uh, doing something with Super Squares. It's an app now. We've gone from paper to an app like wow. we have in most things. And, and it's free, and it's a little more than just numbers. You make three predictions on the game. You answer two questions about advertisements in that app. Where you score points for doing that, so you have to know what's in the commercial. And then you pick two numbers. You, you pick a square, but that's divided into four different number combinations. So... You never get, uh, you, you know, you don't have all bad squares because God knows you pick a five and a nine, you're screwed for the entire game. Because yeah, well, guess who got the up. five and the nine in one of the ones that I've yeah. already signed up for? Got yes. the five and the nine, and so horrible. I should have been on super squares. Yes, in this, and you can still do it. You can still still download it, and so you'll get different numbers, and it's free, and there's over two million dollars in cash and prizes up for grabs. Someone's going to win an eighty thousand dollar Rivian electric SUV. And if you like to do the group thing, like like people do with paper squares, you can still have a group in this. It's called a skybox. You make your own skybox, and you have your own group and do your own prizes if you want. But your scores within the skybox still count in the national scoreboard, so you can win those prizes as well. I'm going to have a skybox. My password is Golik. I invite everybody to come in there and try and beat me in my skybox. There will be a prize for that as well. And just for fun, the Guinness Book of World Records is, is going to be monitoring us, and if uh, we're, we're trying to set a record for most people playing squares on Super Bowl Sunday. So that'll be kind of cool. That sounds really awesome. I dig it. Um, you know, everybody's got different things they talk about on Radio Row, but some of them make me go, all right, going mm -hmm. to sign up. So that that is yeah. awesome. Now let's talk about you for a minute. Yep. Uh, so, you know, you had a long NFL career compared to most people. I think it was, what, nine years? But nine then, years, yep. And then mm -hmm. a 20-year run between Mike and Mike and Golick and Wingo and all these different things. How long did it take you until you felt like you were a broadcaster and not a former player? Wow, that, that's a great question because right when, you know, um, even before Mike and Mike started, because I, I started this, the National Morning Show actually with Tony Bruno, I was doing uh, what is NFL Live now that Laura Rutledge and Ryan Clark and Dan Orlovsky are doing. Well, I, I was part of the original show, which was called NFL Tonight. It was me, Mark Malone, Sean Salisbury, and Merrill Hodge. So we were kind of doing a studio show as well. So that kind of kept us more in our element of we had to talk football but then the radio, all of a sudden, you know, I had to learn the radio mechanics, talk about other sports. I had come from Phoenix where I was doing some local radio and had to talk, you know, hockey, basketball, baseball, all that. So, you know, I had to learn all that then on the national level. So it definitely took a while because I was with Tony Bruno for a year. And then when Greeny and I started, you know, it took us, we didn't know each other. It took us a little bit, everybody to get to know each other. It, to, that, that's a good question because... I was never a broadcaster until I became one. I was a football player basically all my life. I, I, I'll be honest. I don't know if I ever woke up one day and said, I'm a broadcaster 
because every day I'd come in and I'd say something stupid or still make a mistake, but I didn't care. You know, that's just the way I was. Um, let's just say I got, I got more comfortable as, as the years went on, that's for sure. Mike, and you obviously have to be so proud of your son and, and following the path of that. Uh, 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 but is he asking you for advice, or, or are you one of those dads to just kind of let his kid make his own mistakes along the way? Oh, no, he asks for advice, and, and still, you know, you still make mistakes along the way. Um, and, and I have to say, listen, from the starting with Tony Bruno to Greeny to Trey Wingo, uh, uh, still the, the highlight of, of my time was working with my son the last three years. Mm-hmm. Sure. To be able to slip on a microphone and uh, you'd be able to work with one of your kids, I mean, man, there was nothing better because my family was always such a big part of the show. Yeah, and, and, and quite honestly, and, and he'll rattle it off to you as well if you've ever asked him, I told him what my dad always told me. It's the simplest thing in the world, and it was it was be yourself. I said because if you flip on that microphone and try and put on an act, a you got to do it for three or four hours every single day, and b people are going to figure you out. No, you're going to mess up speaking, which I did all the time. You're going to make mistakes, factual mistakes. You don't try to, but it's going to happen. You're going to be wrong on some things. Just admit you're wrong. You know, just you know, just be a regular person. I never wanted, and I try and tell him, don't talk at people, talk to people. You know, listen to their opinions, talk with them. Now, we can take them where a lot of people haven't gone in a professional locker room. doesn't matter what sport. We know the mentality of a pro athlete. So what's their mentality? What are they thinking at this point? What's it like in that locker room, on that field? You know, so we can bring that. But other than that, I mean, we have opinions just like everybody else. So it was a lot of just, you know, find that comfort level for yourself and just do that. So I had all my own questions for you, but then somebody texted in one to the show that I think is a great question. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Adam. He said, what was the interview that made you the most nervous? And I always wonder about that as a broadcaster, because for instance, earlier I teased, we were having Marshall Falk on and there were a couple people that texted in. They're like, good luck, man. He can be a tough interview. And it went great, but it does kind of put you on the, uh uh-oh, do we have a guy who's short here? Or have you ever had an experience like that? or even one that you were kind of like, oh, man, this is a big name that I really admire? Have you ever been nervous in an interview? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and speaking of Marshall Falk, when I first got to ESPN and I was going on the road to games and I had to interview him, he, he, is, he can be a tough interview at times. <laughs> <laughs> there is no doubt about that. Um, usually it's like people that are out of my element. Like at times we brought on, like, um, you know, senators or Congress people, you know, uh, um, so – that's a little bit out of my element, so I, I want to try and make sure I don't say anything stupid. Um, we had a we had a big time, uh, big big uh, uh, athlete come on one time, and and you know just like I was talking about super squares, he wanted to to talk about or, or he came on to talk about something, but you know just like we're doing, I mentioned what I was doing, and then we talked football or whatever, and when we tried to talk sports with this person they wouldn't talk sports they said oh, no wow. i'm only here to talk about you know oh, this product or whatever we're like well wait a minute and we actually got into it on air before we basically <laughs> hung up with them and that was that was really a weird one because we all kind of know how it works to do that and and he just wouldn't play the game at all and so that, that kind of really ticked me off we kind of went at it a little bit on air. I, think, I think our listeners would love it if we did 14 minutes on super squares you yeah know? <laughs> you know what I, you know would love that the people at super squares would love that. <laughs> that dude was doing his job okay i have a, a family question for you because one of my favorite things about when we would do radio row is the guests who aren't the huge name athletes but somebody that did something that during your life is like man that was right up my alley and so every year we would have your brother bob on and yeah. i would beat him down with saved by the bell talk <laughs> oh, how much god. how much does he hate that oh god how about what what a, what a bummer there with with screech you know dustin diamond passing yeah. 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 recently but at my brother's wedding which was in vegas some of the uh, cast came from there so i'd met a few of them but oh yeah I always and I always tick them off because I, when people ask me about it, I'm like, oh god, I was forced to watch the college years, the few episodes until they canceled that. You know, I made it sound like it was a drudgery to watch and everything. But yeah, that's always fun to bring that stuff up to them. <laughs> and, and, and and Mike, I was going to ask you about this year. You know, you doing. I loved hearing you back. Well, we think in the booth. I mean, you I always work in the booth. But how was that experience? I mean, I was excited that you were going to do college games and. 
we're really big on covering the NFL draft here, and I, I do want to maybe get your thoughts about maybe a Notre Dame player or two that you would you would talk about. But what was it like for you? Because I know you wanted to be at the games and stuff like that. How was the season for you uh, uh, broadcasting? Well, I mean, I, the last two games I got to do uh, in person, the Alamo Bowl in San Antonio and then the Fiesta Bowl in Arizona. Other than that, I was at Notre Dame doing the game so yeah. and that, that or, or at espn doing the games and that was that was kind of tough i didn't really dig that at all but you know you had to do it uh but that's something i'm going to keep doing as as i decide what i'm going to do and my agent keeps saying we decide people are calling they want to know what you're going to be doing or what you want to do i know for sure i want to call keep calling games so that'll be part of what i'm going to do because i just absolutely love calling games well, Mike, so thanks so much. This was this yeah, was incredible. Man. Everybody, SuperSquares.com, where you can get in there and try to get a piece of that $2 million pool. Uh, really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks mm-hmm. so much for the time. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.